fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he got rid of the outside of both of them. Maloney! Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God! These guys are when I want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh no. That's oh, massive. No. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh God. My God, what? Yeah, so we're using the VRS Direct Force Pro this year. We have a, a wheel adapter right here, so I'm using the rim I used last year. But the motor right here produces a lot of power, a lot of precision and it helps me you know, just feel the car more, feel the car a lot quicker, uh, especially you know, this week we're at Sonoma. You know, I can feel it you know, when it hits the curbs, any little change in the car, the wheel reacts a lot quicker than your, your typical gear-driven or belt-driven wheel. For example, if you're on oval and the rear tires break loose, force feedback on it corrects a lot quicker than your typical wheels. There's no resistance pretty much as far as being able to make quick corrections on the wheel. So all that, you know, paired with how precise the wheel itself is, uh, you know, it makes it to where it helps you as a driver, you know, to, to find that extra hundredth or thousandth of a second. So when you're getting a, you know, direct drive wheel, especially the VRS wheel, you know, it's, it's heavy duty got good weight to it you know it's it's not a plastic toy feels like you can really beat up on it you know a lot of people have issues with uh, their plastic gear driven wheels just kind of breaking after a couple years you know this thing just feels like it can go forever the forces are really strong where if, if you know you might have to let go of the wheel if you get into the wall you, know, you can adjust all that with the, the settings on it and stuff but you know the wheel itself doesn't play around it's got way more strength than you could ever need and that's what makes it good that you can adjust that down to whatever the car needs so initially you'll be able to get the controller box and the motor together and eventually you will be able to add a rim onto that option. They'll also be including a button plate on it to put on the rim to have all sorts of different buttons and functionality. Also, pedals are coming. So that's a pretty big deal as well. Uh, hasn't been covered too much, but you know the goal is to also have pedals to go along with the Direct Force Pro. So that's pretty exciting. The wheel feels good, you know, it feels very much like a real world steering wheel. You just kind of feel like what you would imagine the car to feel like. Uh, you know, a real steering wheel in a car is very smooth, it's very direct, very quick, and that's what this wheel feels like. Hello everyone and welcome to another round of the Advanced Mazda MX-5 Cup Series where this time we're taking on the absolutely colossal Green Hell. Nürburgring Nordschleife is the battleground for tonight's event and whilst you might be led to believe that this track produces more strategic racing rather than outright battling, you may not have witnessed an MX-5 race around here before. It is absolutely never over until that checkered flag flies. I'm Bo Elbert, and alongside me for tonight's SimSpeed TV coverage is Mr. David Haynes, and directing the cameras will be Mr. J.K. Kennedy. Now, David, this is a much longer race than the previous two weeks, which means playing it safe at the start of the race is going to be pretty important for both keeping your car in one piece, but also fuel saving. Right, yeah, we've gone and flipped it on its head, haven't we? Two weeks of very short tracks one minute lap times you know duking it out corner after corner after corner to here at the Nürburgring where uh, well we're only going to get five laps but that is still going to be a very long race for these cars because this is a mammoth of a lap and it's going to involve an incredible amount of slip streaming as well because despite some of the slow corners the twisty and technical sections there's also a lot of time spent in fourth gear fifth gear racing along some of the long straights here and that will probably keep the packs together and then might play into what you're talking about with the pit stop required there might be someone braving it early there might be someone who tries to save fuel and, and hang it out late there and uh, it would be difficult to uh, make some moves through the pack here though it absolutely would be, but it can be done. We have seen it done previously. But before we get on to tonight's action, how about we check out the championship standings after three rounds so far this season. And at the moment, car number one in tonight's race, Roberto Ferrari, has found himself at the very top of the championship order. But it is so close early on in this championship with Marcello Pagnon and Dave Chapman, who of course went on to win last week in our soft broadcast at Alton Park. 
still very much within range. So it is way too early to call uh, who's going to be in the fight for this championship. There are still so many races to come for Roberto Ferrari has had a very strong uh, start to this season as we may as well get a look at the starting grid for tonight, because of course it is not attached qualifying. These drivers have already qualified before this server even begun, and what that meant was Roberto Ferrari did end up finding his way onto pole position some almost one, uh, 2.3 seconds quicker than Hayata Asago. Caleb Hides will start from third ahead of Shoichi Ishimaru in position number four. Gil Kawabe in position number five ahead of Simone Modica, starting in the top six. Our last week's winner, Dave Chapman from seventh ahead of Chushi Maeda in eighth, Taroki Kato and Shokan Atake rounds out our top 10. Yeah, a couple of familiar names from a week ago, which is great to see them uh, with the opportunity to go wheel to wheel and battle once again here. Got Ivan Pinocchio there alongside Kobe Williams for 11th and 12th on the grid. Then Togo Hisada and Atsushi Une return again. Christopher Kindler joins us. Taiki Miyamoto joining us as well. And then it's Damien Seeger and Sam Devontier, our top 20 on the grid. Just a couple more cars are Vasilios Belitsiotis, uh, Royvan Kutcher, Bailey Frid, John Bailiff, Ben Snell. Good to see him. And Darren Chun as well. And, and one it's... final car is Kobe Laszlo as well. Wasn't showing us on the overlays Did there. Did he not have a qualifying time potentially? Uh, I believe there's a few drivers who are without qualifying time starting from 19th position. Um, so maybe the overlay is just not having a good day. But that is all good because there is only 24 more seconds until these drivers are going to put their foot down and accelerate away from a standing start and embark onto the Nürburgring Nordschleife. We're using only the Nordschleife itself, the Industria Faten, and there is no Gazamstrecker uh, attachment. So it is going to be a very interesting race. Who has the knowledge? Who has the skill to master five laps around the rings? Forget five laps, it's five lights. And it is going to be in a few moments time, lights out. And away they go, and look at the start from Hayata Asaka. Gets a great launch, but not quite able to do anything against Roberto Ferrari. So the field will go in single file so far, and just really try and sort themselves out at the start of this race. You can see the rest of the field working their way through now, as they're going to approach the Hearts and Bucks section. A very winding sequence of corners, but you can't really afford to go side by side. And David, these drivers aren't going side by side. They're being very well behaved, apart from one car who sadly hasn't made it off the grid. Well, yeah, you've got to kind of get single file through the flip-flop back and forth section of the Hudson back here, but then it leads into the long straight up towards Flugplatz and then towards Arenberg, and that's where you're going to see the slipstream really start to come to play. But there would have been a couple drivers without qualifying times really deep in the back of the field here who you need to carefully move forward. Yep, and there's been a big crash in the back where you can see multiple cars around, and it's still continuing on with more contact. One of the drivers around is Christopher Kindle, another one I think involved was, uh, oh, there's so many drivers filing through, it's hard to see, but nonetheless, that is a very engine Milo car of Ben Snell and his race. Well, it only lasted five corners, not five laps. So that is a big shame to see there. And David, we might check it out on the virtual racing school replay. Yeah, it's go and go and no with Milo, unfortunately. Here's what it looks like. I think he's been uh, caught in some spun and slow cars in front of him, all clear. And then, ah, uh, the, the car trying to rejoin clips him. Incredible amount of damage. Uh, on the front there, and that is a tyre sticking out of the guard for Kindler. He's also got a lot of damage on his Mazda. Yeah, it certainly does, and uh, sadly that car won't be taking much further action in this race because he just gets clipped the smallest bit, and I don't know if he was really trying to rejoin. It was just the momentum of bouncing off the barrier, sadly put him right into the path of Ben Snell there, and you can see Kato is going to make his way through the section as well, and oh, he just got absolutely slaughtered from behind. I believe that's the uh, number eight car. Is that no, the 18 of Ivan Pinocchio? And that is a lot of uh, speed to be carrying into that particular section. But nonetheless, the drivers have already made their way through the uh, forest and are making their way now towards Metzgersfeld. And we'll see how they tackle their way as the leaders now funnel their way into this ultra high speed left hand. It's always a confidence giving corner because it is so high speed on entry. And then you have to slow it all the way down into this next little section, which leads us all the way up to Callanhard. So this little section at the moment, the driver is still continuing to be single file. They know that at the moment there is nothing to be gained by throwing the car up the inside. All it is at the moment 
stay single file, get yourself the laps completed. Right, crazy stuff in the background, but then back here up at the top eight, they're all in the order they qualified, just holding station at the moment with Ferrari at the lead and Hayata Asaga following along. We did have that little bit of an onboard with last week's winner, Dave Chapman, and he's also maybe just keeping the, the car together, trying to avoid taking too much risk, maybe also just saving a little bit of fuel here. Yeah, absolutely. There is nothing to be won in the early laps, but there is plenty that can be gained that can help you later on. So don't go full aggressive. Just try and strategize your way forward as they all work their way through now towards Loudest Kink, of course, infamous for what happened in 1976. But uh, we're just having a few little connection issues, though, for Dave Chapman. So if he is trying to just be a little bit patient and fuel save at the moment, well, it's a lot easier to fuel save when there are cars in front of you and not disappearing. So we'll see how that goes for him. And hopefully he can rejoin. But at the moment, there is at least seven cars in this little battle group making their way now down towards Kazelshin and the Mutt Curve. And uh, I think at the moment, we're not going to see too many passes, although Shuchi Ishimaru is thinking about a move on Caleb Pies and getting closer and closer to the back of the Drop Bear Motorsport car. I wonder what's going on because we've just had two drivers drop at the same time there for Dave Chapman and uh, Sato. So... Bit of bump drafting going on though, you've got to be careful of that coming up the hill here. Be careful not to damage your car or the car in front. Yes indeed, of course, uh, plenty of revisions made to the uh, new damage model very recently by iRacing. They're very determined to make sure that uh, they are continually uh, improving it, because of course there was a few little issues with it, but iRacing very quickly jump onto that and make sure but they are fixing that as quick as they can. And there's a few upset drivers, one of which is Bailey Frid. And I think Sam Devontier is going to be the other driver involved in that. A big accident at the Mutt Curve, which translates to Courage Curve. And did someone maybe have a little bit too much courage into an ultra-fast left-hander? Let's see, making their way through Bailey Frid. Oh, that was a bit of a tricky one to call at the moment. You can see, oh wow, big impact into the rear of one of the cars as well. So three drivers, maybe four, getting damaged from that as well. I think their free just wanted to go for a bit of a move uh, up the inside of the... I think that might have... I'm not entirely sure who that other driver was. But uh, whether the door was just closed a little bit or was maybe Frid a bit opportunistic? I don't know. I just know that when I see that much smoke in front of me, I'll lift off a little bit. Again, messy up the back, but then just calm for our top seven, who are still staying in line. The, the car in eighth that might want to hitch their wagon to this train is Kobe Williams, but he's still just tantalizingly three seconds off the back of them. He'd want to close that down in this section if he could. This is where the driving skill and the grip matters a little bit more than the slipstream, but then get through this sector past the Stefan Baloff S's and Shrelvin Schwanz and onto the dotting Ohur. That is when you absolutely want to be picking up a slipstream off someone else or you're going to get left behind. Absolutely. It's been known for some of these MX-5s to lose up to two seconds in a straight line down the Don Jehu. So for these drivers, they absolutely need to make sure they're in a slipstream at that point in time. So Kobe Williams at the moment and the drop bear motorsport cars will be ragging it across this section through Flance Garden and then eventually through the Stefan Belafessis like Roberto Ferrari is currently navigating. He's your leader at the moment and hasn't been challenged up to this point in time. But I've got to say, I don't know how much longer that's going to last because we're heading up to where all the action is going to be happening on the very last lap of this race. It truly is a race tonight where it's not going to be decided until the very last lap. The drivers are going to be fighting their way to get past one another the entire way down the almost two kilometer back straight as Hayata Asaga you can see they're just behind lurking and lurking he doesn't have to worry too much he is well and truly into the slipstream range and oh David here comes the speedway part yeah I'm anxious for Roberto Ferrari at the moment knowing that Asaga was just six tenths behind him coming onto the straight here this is just minutes of full throttle for these cars so the long shot's going to tell the real story of the snake following your leader. What is a saga going to do? Because he has got the speed to get past. It looks like he doesn't fancy it because they go too wide behind the third. These two could get swallowed up by one of these others. 
Yep, absolutely. You can see the closing speed from Caleb Hides and also Shoichi Ishimaru. And in fact, Ishimaru got actually blocked on the inside. So Caleb Hides, well, I've got plenty of momentum. I'm going to go all the way from third. And tell you what, first place looks pretty good right about now. To the front goes Drop Bear Motorsport late on the brakes. And I think as long as he holds up through the final two corners, he is going to be our race leader at the end of the very first lap of five. It's a long race to go. You can see the drivers behind all working their way through. A bit of a sloppy end to the lap, though, from Hides. You can see Ferrari almost thinking about getting a move uh, past that point in time. But he should hold off. Just go through Hearts and Bark, and then very quickly... You're up to the long straight uh, after Flugplatz, all the way up to Schwingkreuz. So if Roberto Ferrari really wants this lead back, he doesn't have to wait all that long. It was an interesting move, I think, from Asaga to just try to bump Ferrari. And it didn't, it didn't really work because the cars behind all had enough speed to then try to get around. And it got a bit tense for that first time into Tiergarten. But now it just sort of all resets and goes again. And there's no patience from wow. Ferrari. He wants the lead back. Hides. Did he make a mistake there, or did he recognize that Ferrari was actually a pretty good leader the first lap around? Yeah, it's a little bit of an interesting one. He didn't fight that at all, did he? But at the same time, I'm surprised that Roberto Ferrari even went for that move at that point in time. And look at Hayata Asako once again. He is in no mood to be passing people. He's just quite happy to be playing Rig Gunner at the moment, chilling right behind the rear bumper and pushing everyone else towards the front. That is a very interesting tactic. We'll see how it pans out. But look at the overspeed it gives Caleb Hides. And this is what Roberto Ferrari should have done to Caleb Hides, but because he's gone up the inside at Ice Park, all of a sudden he's going to get the lead back. All the are they? It's side by side through Spinkreutz, and up the inside goes Ferrari. He will hold on to it into Arenberg. That was a fantastic uh, retaliation from Ferrari to hold on to a position that really should have been lost. Well, you always pocket just a little bit when you see them going too wide for the driver on the outside coming across the crest. I've seen that end in tears many times. It's ended in many tears for myself. So that they all held on to it there was a surprise to me. But it is good to see that now they're getting a little bit more racy on this second lap. But still, for the front guys, they still have a mindset for the, for the long game, for the pit stop still coming up. No one wants to throw away their race just yet. But they're starting to jockey for their positions inside the leading pack who have been dropping everyone from behind 8th, 9th, 10th. Kobe Williams, Shokan Otake, and Togo Hisada have kind of formed up three cars together, but they are not catching the leading seven. If this keeps up for this lap, then you're looking at one of these seven cars for the win. You absolutely are. Of course, we saw a little while ago, Kobe Williams just three seconds off the lead. Go down the Donja Ho straight through Schwingkreutz. All of a sudden, he is over five seconds back. Make that 6.4. My apologies. So, you can show just how aggressive and beneficial the slipstream is around here. And you can lose so much time very, very quickly. Speaking of losing time, at the moment, the gap between first and second stands at nine tenths of a second. So, Roberto Ferrari, of course, he was on pole by some 2.3 seconds over second place Hayata Asaga. But uh, he's using that pace in the race as well, and he's willing to try and break the slipstream nice and early and leave the rest to just fight for second. This could come back to bite Asaga if Ferrari gets away, because Asaga had the speed on the Dotting of her last time to take the lead. He could have then taken uh, the race by the scruff of the net, taking control, but instead he waited behind. And now, if Ferrari is able to break this toe. No guarantees yet because the slipstream, especially uphill, uh, can be a second and a half, almost two on these cars. Uh, Saga clearly has the speed, but he's let himself get muscled out of the position he probably should have been. And now it's a huge question mark. Is Hyde going to be able to pick up the slipstream uphill here from 1.2 seconds back? That's the thing, of course. This section of the track, it's a bit difficult to really showcase just how uphill it is. They go down this little dip here, but from there on, it is a very steep gradient. In something like a GT3 car, you don't even get into your final gear. In fact, it's actually much beneficial to stay in fifth gear, uh, such as the incline. So the slipstream benefit should really be helping Caleb Hides here just to close up a bit more, and it is, and it, of course... Saga is bumping him. Saga yeah. is bumping him up the hill too. He, he knows what was at stake here, and he's like, well, if you can give couple more tenths of a second here to hide, then that'll really get him back in the slipstream of Ferrari. And now I wouldn't be surprised to see a saga try to spring a move to get back to second so he doesn't have to play that kind of shenanigans to stay with the leader. 
Yep, we'll see what he can do as they break hard into Steel Strucker and then work their way towards the infamous carousel for the second time. But absolutely, a saga getting very aggressive with his bump drops and tactics to make sure Caleb Hyde's got back onto the slipstream. But that's a bit of a warning shot, I feel, for the rest of the field of just what Ferrari is capable of if they do allow him to break away. So absolutely, you're bang on there, David. I'm interested to see what a saga will do. Now that they're all together, if he is a lot more authoritative to make sure that he remains in second place because he knows that he is able maybe just to stick with Roberto Ferrari a bit better than Caleb Hydes can as they work their way through Hot Oct, which of course is the high eight as the translation, but also interestingly, the highest point on the entire Norch life. So from this point, it is all downhill quite literally uh, at this point on the circuit. Hopefully not for the drivers. There are plenty of drivers, I'm sure, who are hoping the race is all uphill from this point in time as we go back and see another little battle now involving car number eight and a battle and it's very bright livery there and we may just get a look at it once more in the virtual racing school replay david yeah vasilios Siotis. here we go taking a look up the hill good run out of the carousel and this is one of those places uphill where getting your gear shifts right matters and he gets to the inside here he's an opponent's got some of the tires on the grass and it's not a place you often see a move happen but there it goes. Very impressive pass indeed. So uh, one spot up there, and uh, they will be hoping to continue their run as at the moment they sit down in 12th place, but some seven spots gained since the start of the race. So a big mover and shaker there as they work their way through the flat sky. And a little moment there, but the drivers do actually get uh, air in their car. They actually lift all four wheels off the ground, even in MX-5, just very, very briefly, which is very, very cool as well as we now work our way to the very high speed Stefan Belafesses to the left, to the right, and then to the left once more. You can see on board with a Hayata Asaga at the moment. How close he's getting the Caleb Hides. Thankfully, I don't think he has to worry all too much. Roberto's Ferrari's attempt at uh, overtaking or breaking away from the field behind has been completely ruined by their bump drafting tactics. So it is still the uh, top group of cars all together at the moment, although Atushi Maeda and Aguila Kawabe as well, just dropping a little bit further behind than they would perhaps like. So they have to be careful not to lose the draft down the Don Jaho straight coming up. Because of course the cars in front are all very close to one another. So the slipstream benefit there is going to be even greater than for those in 6th and 7th place at the moment as they work their way down the long straight. And Roberto Ferrari, I would not want to be you, buddy. Yeah, what is Asaga going to do this time? Because we saw him cautious to, to overtake and move forward and try to grab positions earlier. Is anyone from the top 7 going to go for the pit lane this time? I think probably not. Asaga and lifted. All closing up, four in a line. Ferrari oh. doesn't want the bump. Modica with huge speed. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this. He may go all the way to the front. Caleb Hyde's very quickly jumped on the radio there to say, can we not bump draft anymore? Modica actually had to jump on the brakes, and that is now going to allow a saga back through it. And does a saga think about the inside on Caleb Hyde's? He gave room there, did Hyde's, but thankfully wasn't needed as a saga backed out. But Modica with a phenomenal run there as the leaders almost wrecked each other there. So I said sixth and seventh place were struggling to keep up. Now they're not, because everyone else was breaking on a straight. Massively checked up the pack too. From first to seventh, there was 3.6 seconds coming onto the straight. By the time they were breaking into the tier garden, there was just two seconds to cover all seven cars. And we're probably going to see a very similar thing happening a bit deeper in the field here. Uh, Bailiff and Laszlo are side by side, which you can't really do in GT cars here, but you can do it in these cars, and that is muscling the way down the inside of the tier guard. Absolutely, that was a great moment there. It was very sideways. There's a 23, and I think we just saw one of our very first pit uh, stop takers as well. So a few drivers will have a bit of strategy. That was Ivan Panaccio, who uh, dove into the pit. So we'll see what he can do as he is our first taker of the pit stops. But what we are expecting is perhaps a lot more pit stops. I have to stop saying that word. I've said that like four times in one sentence. But we are expecting all of them to be really taking place at the end of this lap. So maybe they won't be so aggressive down the Don Jaho straight this time. But this is the point where if anyone has been fuel saving, this is where they're going to benefit. Sochi Ishimaru was fourth in the pack, now fifth in the pack. He's one of the drivers we haven't seen making any moves. He's just been riding along. So maybe he could have been... Uh, a driver with an opportunity to fuel save a lot more than Saga, Hydes, or Ferrari, or even 
Modica, who decided he wanted to pick up a bunch of positions on the dotting of her last time around. Yep, we'll see how much more he can progress as well, and uh, see if he's able to move all the way from fourth, uh, a little bit higher up the field as they work their way down the foxhole, which is one of my favorite names in all of motorsport, because quite simply it was named, because during construction, well, a fox ran into a drainage pipe. It was a hole, it was a fox, they called it foxhole, and that is how it worked out, which is absolutely brilliant as they work their way through Adnair Forced, which is simply just the Adnair Forest. I, I love to track all the corner names around this circuit. They're so literal. Well, I mean, there's no time for messing about when you've got hundreds of corners that, uh, that need names. <laughs> At a certain point, inspiration gives way, and uh, yeah, you'll see a fox in a hole, and you'll be like, Do you know what this corner is now? Boom, done. Let's move on to the next <laughs> one. Absolutely. As uh, they work their way through the midsection of this track once more, and uh, Roberto Ferrari once again had a really nice breakaway going uh, through Hutz and Bark, almost broke slipstream, but then through the full plots and Spinkroit section, well, he got closed up all the way again. So he is really still putting his foot down, and at no point fuel saving. So Roberto Ferrari, you'd expect him, if the leaders or the cars behind are able just to stay a little bit close to him. He's going to fall down the order quite dramatically because Roberto Ferrari has not been fuel saving at any point in this race as we go on board with the Chushi uh, Maida as well into this very tricky section, the lowest point on the circuit around the North Life. So now you know both the highest and lowest point. But uh, at this point in time, these drivers are really working their way through and not really getting too aggressive on lap number three. It's been a lot quieter compared to the last two laps. And we are expecting a lot of pit stops at the end of this one. And that's where it really has the possibility to just shake up what has been status quo for about 80 kilometers. Bergwerk, a bit cambered, need a late apex there. Yep, absolutely. And that exit is so important because it leads down this entire straight. And then something like a little bit more powerful, like a GT3 car, that corner can really make or break your lap. Thankfully, in an MX5, with how little power they have, the uh, disparity between getting on the throttle you know, just a little bit earlier isn't as big. So it just means the pack racing is so much closer in these cars compared to a GT3. And what that means is someone like Caleb Hydes, who is actually currently switching between gears. He couldn't quite decide what gear he wanted to be in there, whether he wanted to be in fourth or fifth, such as the RPM range these cars go through, going up this really long hill. You can see he's finally elected for fourth, when he's quite clearly almost on the limit of fifth. So that's one of the things you have to learn around the knowledge life, is what gear to use when, because it's not as easy as just, you know, focusing on your rev lights. Right, it's a big hill. Sometimes you're, you're accelerating up it in fourth, you reach the top of fourth, you shift into fifth, but you can't actually keep accelerating in fifth. You start losing speed once you get into fifth. The gear's too tall to ex continue accelerating up the hill. So actually, some cars, the fastest way up the hill there is just to bang off the limiter in fourth. And you hate to do it, but uh, with enough experience, you'll learn that that's what you've got to do to, to maintain your speed going up the hill. Is fifth is too tall. Yep, absolutely as everyone works their way through. It's a bit of a stalemate on this lap at the moment. They've made their way through the carousel, and once again, working their way through Hot Oct, and then Viverman and a whole bunch of famous corners. This is one of my favorite sections of the Norch Life. It's such a flowing, winding section of circuit, and uh, you can really get a really good rhythm here if you know where you're going, and it is a very tricky section to learn as well for beginners, because so many of these corners do actually end up looking like one another with constant rights and lefts and rights and lefts, repeating after one another. It is very tricky for those new to uh, actually figure out which corner is which. But you need a rally navigator at first to tell you, you, you really know, uh, five right tightens over crest into three left or, or something like that. It feels like a rally stage uh, at, at, at first because it's quite narrow, very winding, a lot of elevation change in this sector. It's where you don't see uh, the passing happening so much, but in a good car, it's an absolute dream to drive. Uh, you know, if uh, just a little breathe on the throttle and your, your car hits all four apexes at Vipperman and goes exactly where you steer it. It's rewarding, but it's a bad place to have a bad car. Absolutely. This is not a section where you want a car with, which is understeering, of course. In more powerful cars where you run quite low wing, uh, this is a section where it is quite tricky because, of course, the cars are constantly understeering. Thankfully, in an MX-5, very little, if any, in the way of aero adjustments. Very stock-based cars, very much production with a roll cage, and they are definitely good fun 
the rounds this circuit as they work their way through. A lot of curb usage there from Caleb Hides. That's something you don't usually see through the section. Normally, it is a part of the track where you'd much rather stay off the curbs entirely. Caleb Hides doesn't mind monster trucking over them. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to miss the apex, but it is a very, very fast committed place down the, the S's there where you don't really want to upset the car on these curbs. Then uh, the little carousel, another place where you've got to kind of jump out of it and, and leap back into action. So on to the Dodding Uhura again. Looks like it's going to be Ferrari leading highs, leading a saga, and Modica has stayed in touch as well. Who's going to want to pass before pit entry? Well, that's going to be an interesting thing, isn't it? Because, of course, we do expect Roberto Ferrari, a long-time race leader, to fall back just a little bit in the pit stops due to the fact that uh, he has not been fuel-saving at any point in this race. Caleb Hides is in the slipstream, but not really doing anything with it. Hayata Asaga? Nope. I might just stay here. So the top three are going to stay exactly as they oh, I thought that Caleb Hides said to Asaga, no more bump drafting. Well, Masaga's not really listening. He's going to bump draft Hides a little bit more, but look at Modica and the speed that he has. Everybody else at the moment is doing 200. He's doing 210 and to the front from fourth position. And at that, some eight tenths back onto the straight. So that was a massive run there. Caleb Hides went onto the straight in second place. He's going to finish the straight in fourth place. But Modica, he's like, well, if you guys are just going to back off and not overtake, well, then I'm going to, uh, you know, just continue passing you all. But interestingly, David, not everybody deciding lap threes when they want to pit. Funnily enough, it's the Japanese drivers that stay out. So Asaga, who didn't want to pass. Ishimaru, who I said was just in the pack, just fuel saving. And it's Ushimeda as well. Stay out. While all those other guys come into the pits. There was another great battle pack uh, behind a game. It's going to get split up. Uh, and... Who comes into the pits in that one? Sushi Une does, Asilos Bellatios does as well. So this is a critical lap for everyone who stayed out and a critical pit stop for everyone who came in. Caleb Hyde's getting held up very badly at the moment. He came out in the worst place possible, right behind Toyo Hasada, who was not quite on the pace. He's also got uh, Taiki Mayamoto and Shoka Nataki in front as well, whereas his, the two drivers he was fighting, Simone Modica and Roberto Ferrari, are long in front of him. You can see them there working their way through Hearts and Bach, and there is Caleb Hyde's. A lot of time lost for the Drop Bear Motorsport car, and I've got to say, of course, we don't like to say it, but that may be race over already for Caleb Hides because the slipstream effect around here is so crucial. And the fact is, he's getting held up right now. As look at these two, your race leaders, Shotshi Ishimaru and Hayata Asaga. A bit of a game plan here. They're not going to fight. They're going to make sure they're going as fast as possible on their in-lap, not to lose time. Out of Varenberg once more, they will go side by side. Caleb Hyde's going to try and make up a few more positions at the moment. He's going to go past Togo Hasada. So that is one spot done into Schwingkreutz. He will go and look at the body language of the car as it compresses over that elevation change there. Hard on the brakes into Arenberg. What can he do down the foxhole? Can he get the draft effect on Taiku Mayamoto and maybe use that to get a position done into Adnir Force? He's a long way back, so I'm not sure will quite be able to, so I think for Caleb Pides, he's going to lose even more time compared to the cars in front. And if you want to reference the gap from him to Roberto Ferrari, who he was racing at the uh, start of this race, well, it's now roughly four seconds. So Caleb Pides has lost a lot of time, sticks to the nose up the inside. And Adnair Force basically runs Taiki uh, Miyamoto off the road. He's going to get great exit speed and then get the pass done before they arrive at Metzgersfeld. That was a bold one there. Didn't quite catch it at the time, but you can see the other driver had to run off the track a bit there as they got in a little bit hot as well. You can see just how hard he's driving that. So let's take the virtual racing school replay to get another look uh, out of the foxhole up towards Adnall Forst. Here it is. He's so close, so committed, throwing it over that curb at the apex that's blind and then down the inside here. Just, uh, I think the move was on there. He still made the corner, so I think he sort of scared his opponent there and, and got the position. 
Yes, indeed. So he'll move up one more spot. Next target of him will be Sho Konotake in the 22 car just in front. But you can already see the leaders uh, that he was fighting earlier in this race along up the road there. So that is not ideal. You can see there they are working their way through X Muller at the moment. A very tricky corner uphill right hander. And uh, you can now see Sho Konotake and Caleb Hyde's making the way through now. So a big delta between those guys. So Caleb Hyde has a lot of work to do if he's going to be involved in this battle for the race win at the end of this race. So plenty to do for him, but absolutely, this race is not over until the checkered flag flies. And he was just ever so unlucky the way that those pit stops fell, that Modica and Ferrari came out just ahead of the cars that hadn't stopped, and he came out just behind them, and that really drove an important and decisive wedge between them. Now the race is also on between the... Uh, the two flying Madonnas of Modica and Ferrari versus that top three and what kind of pace they are going to do when they're not being towed around by Ferrari. So Caleb Hides has managed to find a way through and he will now be the leader of this little pack. The downside for that, of course, is now he has no slipstream. So any position or time he is going to gain on Modica and Ferrari is going to have to be all on raw speed. Thankfully for him, if there is any section of this track where you can make time up without a slipstream, like David said earlier in the race, it is this section from the carousel all the way up to roughly Schwalbenge fonts. But uh, you do need to hit the apexes to gain time, and Caleb Hides runs a little bit wide through the steel striker and loses just a few more seconds. Move back up to the front of this race to your leaders, trying to continue their way up the front. Of course, that was Ferrari and Modica hunting down uh, your first and second cars of the saga and Ishimaru at the moment who are working their way already towards Whipperman. So they are flying out there without taking their pit stop. But we do know they're going to lose roughly 21 seconds in the pit transit time and their lead at the moment stands at 18 seconds. So this is going to be an interesting one to see just how close the saga and Ishimaru come out of the pits compared to Madika and Ferrari. This is one of the tracks with this uh, industry fart and pit lane that's quite short and it's not really located on the biggest straight or anything the time lost on the entry and the exit going in and out of pit lane isn't so severe uh so i think the the real delta is a little bit underneath 20 seconds because that time includes from the pit entry to the pit exit so you can fly in and fly out of the pit lane pretty quickly but it does seem like on this lap so far as i've been watching the gap from a saga to ferrari it has just come down a second or so when you factor in that Asaga was behind them uh, before the pit stops is really really working to just make sure after this pit stop that he has slipstream still from those guys because I don't think he's going to be able to come out ahead of them but the question is can they drop in between uh, the Flying Madonnas and Caleb Hyde's or are they going to end up behind him Yep, that is a very big question indeed, and we'll get our answer very shortly, because of course we are expecting them to come into the pits at the very end of this lap. So they'll be pitting on what is essentially the white flag, which is a very unique situation. But of course, that is just what the Nordschleife provides. It is always interesting for strategy, always interesting for racing action as well, as your leaders are now heading their way towards the Galgenkopf corner. Very long right hand that feels like it never ends, but it does eventually end. It's just a very long trip around the right hand. And also worth noting as well that uh, Atsushi Maeda just about in the slipstream of these top two as well. So we were saying this entire time it's a top two, or at least I was, but really Atsushi Maeda has done a great job to stay in the slipstream throughout the entire Nordschleife circuit. And now is a big draft benefit already, a much higher speed than Asaga. And the cars behind, that was so close between Ishimaru and Asaga. I thought we we're going to see a big, big crash there, but they'll go side by side now. But look at Maeda and the speed that he has, although he is going to start lifting off the throttle he is not interested in fighting with these drivers. They just want a clean pit entry. Well, Asaga doesn't. He wants his position back. So how about we go side by side for this spot, what is essentially first place at the moment, and back through goes Asaga ahead of Ishimaru. So he got both passed and got overtaken himself in a single straight hard right there and into the pits they will go. And uh, this is where it all matters as Roberto Ferrari and Simone Medica making their way already into the final braking zone on the circuit. So this is going to be quite close, David. 
I have to think that uh, these two Italian teammates are gonna are gonna inherit the lead here. But the real question is just by how much Asaga Ishimaru made it still taking service, and they're going now. But you can clearly tell Ferrari Modica so patient uh, in the first couple laps, nailed their pit stop, built the kind of gap they needed. There goes Hides right back into the middle of this. So the leaders are Ferrari Modica Asaga Ishimaru Hides. Made it. Not a huge surprise that we've seen a saga rejoin between uh, the Italians and Hides. Yep, not at all. It is uh, roughly what we expected. But what is going to happen on this unexpected final lap in this race, as uh, it is the two teammates fighting their way out? They've got a clear one two at the moment, but are they going to be able to sort it amongst themselves? on this final lap, or are they going to fight between themselves and maybe gift a present to Hayata Asaga, who's going to be hunting them down in third place at the moment. You can see a big gap back to Shuichi Ishimaru, and then a little bit of a gap back to Caleb Hides, and then also Atsushi Maeda running in sixth place at the moment as well. So they're all a little bit spread out, but we do expect the field just to compress ever so slightly as Modica, back in the slipstream of Ferrari, closes up, heading towards Vincrons. They were inseparable for the first couple of laps, but now the pit stops has separated everyone out just a little bit. And it looks good for these two at the moment. But will there be any team orders on the final lap? Ferrari definitely led more laps. Modica, though, almost all of his positions gained have been from very, very clever and well-timed runs on the Dorting I remember he picked up the three positions one lap and then another three the next and found himself hitting from the lead so yeah maybe on the final lap it really does all come down to that placement and that positioning on the dotting of Hua. these two want to be clear of everyone else but then it might be all bets off you'd have to wonder what Atsushi Maeda and a few other drivers especially including Hayata Asaga who was bump drafting so many drivers at the start of the race of course uh, he was playing it so safe whereas the likes of uh, Modica was so aggressive and now he finds himself challenging for the race win whereas Saga is a little bit further back in third place and in fact dropping off as well so you have a nice little battle here forming back in the lower part of the race as well I think we're on board at the moment with Toko Hasada as he works his way through at Nair Force and this is a nice little group of cars you have Atsushi Une in front Vasilios uh, Bellatoisis as well uh, Sho Kanatake and Taiki Mayamoto all within a very close range at the moment. So this could be a very nice uh, five-car scrap all the way to the final lap because at the moment, every single one of them is within slipstream range of one another. So this little group at the moment is not over by any stretch of the imagination for eighth place. They're like those uh, sort of magnet toys for kids, aren't they? You can spread them all out. But eventually, they'll start clumping together. Your third and fourth place cars have clumped together now, as well as Ishimaru's caught the switch of a saga. Then this battle that sort of all brought itself together as sort of a five car, now three and two car battle. And there's some big movers in the mid pack here as well, like Vasilios, who's come from 19th on the grid to 10th. And now look at him, unmissable in purple, uh, reflective nuclear purple looks like the kind of thing that they would uh, come out with a new flavor of monster and put that color on the can It'd probably be blueberry or or something but yeah he's got the opportunity to pick up two more positions here and that'd make him uh, the biggest mover in the field yes indeed he's moved up a lot of positions at the moment of course the highest amount of positions gained at the moment is 11 and there are a few drivers who maybe uh, like Kobe Laszlo have the potential to make it 12 positions gained if he can get to the back of Darren Shun by the end of this lap. But uh, we do go back to Taiki Miyamoto and this little group of cars at the moment as they work their way through to Klaus Dirtle and Mutt Curve at the moment. You can see side by side between Shokon Atake and Taiki Miyamoto. Big squeeze to the grass. How about two wheels actually in the grass now for the uh, number 22 car as he goes around the outside the long way. And what is Vasilios going to do? Is he going to try and make it three wide? No! He's going to just tuck in and make sure that uh, the pass is completed 
on uh, Taiki Miyamoto, so he will lose two spots. Atsushi Une thinks about going around the outside of Courage Curve. That is a very brave thing to do, and he's going to do it. Just two wheels in the grass. That was phenomenal. Yeah, an inch from catching that grass and ending up in the arm car, oh. throwing it all the way on the last lap, but it's not, it's not done. These guys are crazy on the Hasada. final lap now. Hasada went for a massive move on, on, move on Miyamoto. And I thought for a moment he was almost going to roll the car on the curb. He was so far up in the air. That was pretty incredible racing as they now work their way towards the carousel for the very last time. This is a great battle at the moment. No change for first and second. If anything, Roberto Ferrari has actually managed to extend the gap a little bit. So you're not missing anything up front. We'll let you know when they do get to the Donjaho straight. But at the moment, this is where the action is. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy. Some some big winners and a lot of risk being taken here, and they haven't even got to the do or die section at the end of the lap on the dotting of her, where no one's going to lift on the final lap. That's not what you uh, that's not what you come here for to uh, give up and be cautious on the final lap. It's going to be the throttle pinned to the floor until they get to the tear garden. First and second together, one to watch a little later on. Asaga and Ishimaru are still together. Uh, Maida has started catching Caleb Hydes as well, so it's all two car packs for the top six. It is going to be a spicy final lap here, both. It absolutely is, and how is it going to end for these drivers? Because uh, like you say, it is a two by two by two for the entire top six. So whoever is leading the group at the moment won't be feeling too safe. But like you alluded to as well, I am interested to see what happens to these flying Madonna cars. Because of course, can't forget Roberto Ferrari is our championship leader at the moment. So he is the driver that needs all these points possible to extend his lead just a little bit more. Modica, you know, we don't know what the situation is at this team. But maybe, just maybe, he thinks too early in the championship to care about points. I want a race win, and I want it at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, one of the biggest tracks in the world, and this is where there is plenty of acclaim to be had if you do end up taking, taking the checkered flag as they work their way through the final right-hander and then down this ever so long straight. Modica, how many cars in this race has he passed down this straight? What is one more going to do? He closes up, closes up, and lifts off. So now, is this him just playing a number two driver, or does he know if he made that move just then, that Ferrari could respond nice and quickly once more? I think Modiga is just waiting to have a second chance at this. You can see he's thinking about tucking back in now, but he's not really. So maybe Modica is uh, going to Valtteri Bottas this just a little bit and decide that Roberto Ferrari is the championship leader and sadly leave us with a slightly anticlimactic ending. Not for Ishimaru and Asaga. Change the position there for third and fourth. Does Asaga think about going side by side? He's going to try it for third. He wants the podium. Contact is made and Ishimaru is only just going to pull it up into the final corner. Roberto Ferrari takes the checkered flag hit a Modica. Ishimaru then tries to turn him but across the line there will go and comes up quick. So that is how they will finish the saga will uh, end up getting only fourth place he tried it so much but look at this three wide down the back straight and it's two wide in the background as well contact all three are gone make that all four and only one will survive the 20 car of togo hasada is going to pick up all of the spoils at the very end as there is going to be a lot of cars limping to the line here where are they going to finish? Because there will be cars like Darren June closing up very quickly. You can see Kanatake is very injured, while at the moment Darren June is doing 203 kilometers an hour. Miyamoto can't move. He is out of the race on the very final lap with almost no more time to go. Oh, it's going to be so close between Kanatake and Darren June, but I think Kanatake is going to limp ever so slowly across the line and then. Darren Chu will come across the line to end up finishing 12 spots up, David. Yeah, I mean, we've seen two wide end in tiers as the, the track narrows up and starts to snake a little bit into the tier garden. So there's four wide on the dotting of her, five wide because someone gets on the grass, and then they remain three wide coming down the hill and underneath the Bilstein Bridge. And, and, and that's where the problems start, is two wide becomes difficult once the track flicks back uphill. Three doesn't work. Fourth car gets tangled in there. 
and it was, it was an interesting gymnastic routine there in the background. <laughs> yeah, you can see absolutely no driver there for Miyamoto, so that's a shame for uh, their race to end in that fashion. That is a very large accident to end this race, but nonetheless, the results are just about official. And Roberto Ferrari, well, we thought we might have got a final lap showdown, but Modica does play the Valtteri Bottas, plays the number two driver, and Roberto Ferrari will end up taking that one with a Suichi Ishimaru in a very aggressive fight with Hayata Asaga at the end of the race. Rounds out our podium. Asaga has to settle for fourth with Caleb Hydes winning his battle for position number five ahead of Atsushi Maeda, who would finish down in sixth. Will Kawabe in seventh ahead of Togo Hasada, who picked up plenty of spots on the very last lap thanks to that accident, ahead of Atsushi Une and Vasilios Belatoisis. And then some of the cars that just had to limp their way to the line at the end here. Shokan Atake just held on from uh, late charging Darren Chun. Then Kobe Laszlo, Ivan Pinocchio might have had to have made two pit stops. Nope, just the one. And then Dave Chapman did return, did get back out on track. But obviously, as you can see, two minutes away from the lead, unfortunately. Similar story for Riven Chacha. And then Taiki Miyamoto might have exceeded the incident limit to be classified in 17th. Oh, I had to tow and therefore, I'm not sure. It gets complicated there. And Taroaki Kato on the lead lap, but only just. And then Bailey Frid, John Bailiff, retirement. Same Kobe Williams, Ben Snell, Christopher Kindler, Damon Seager, and Sam Zavontia. Crazy stuff. And I loved it. Yep, absolutely. The knowledge life never disappoints. And that was a very good race indeed. But we go from perhaps the longest circuit out there to one of the smallest. We go to Lime Rock next week. It's the Grand Prix layout. And that's going to be an interesting one indeed. But if there is any combination, everybody on iRacing knows Nemex 5 at Lime Rock is right up there. Because David, it's one of the rookie class cars or combinations. Yeah, great turnout today at the Nordschleife. Again, Lime Rock Park is a track that everybody has. MX5 Cup car is a car that everyone has. So there is uh, no excuses for not showing up next week for that one. And again, there's just enough slipstream on the pit straight that you can see people make moves into turn one. But then you've got to be consistent, really flow the speed around the rest of the lap at Lime Rock. It's a track a lot of people have experience with. It's got a couple gnomes there. So that's uh, all the motivation you need. Yep, absolutely. If the racetrack doesn't fascinate you, well, the gnomes absolutely should. But that is what we're going to be showing next week. But for now, that is all from us here at SimSpeed TV. I'm Bro Albert. A big thank you to David Haynes for joining me uh, today and as well, Mr. JK Kennedy in the director's booth. But from us, that is all and we shall see you next week. SF2000 is a blast to drive now, and here's your chance to learn it quickly. From my tutorial, VRS created a free bonus track guide for the Laguna Seca circuit, where you can learn exactly what I do in every corner to improve your lap times and get faster on track. You'll learn how to easily recognize brake markers, you'll find out which curves to attack and which ones to avoid, you'll know when to use the full track, and when a sequence of corners requires a compromise. And you'll learn how hard to brake and when to lift. The VRS quick reference track maps are available free to download and delivered each week to your inbox. The entire global MX-5 series is available 
as well as bonus maps like this one and many more. So if you're a new racer, or a veteran, or just anyone who wants to learn how to get faster sooner, the VRS Track Guides are for you. Just hit the link or button on screen and get yours today.